red. What, Bob? Put it in reverse so we can back it up. Back up gear. You dummy! There ain't no ship knob in here yet! Hey, and don't forget, all this week, subscriptions are free, so you can hit that subscribe button. Don't cost you anything all week. Don't miss out. New shirt. Got the body back on. Red in there, making sure everything fitting good. Got the shop cleaned up well. It's cleaned up pretty good. It's a little bit clean. But anyway, I gotta get the front cap. I ain't got it painted yet, but I gotta get it on there and get it before I weld the body down. I gotta get the front cap on there and I gotta get all the body panel all of them lined up before I weld it down, so that's the next task. All right, got the front cap on, got the door stuck on there. I uh, got the arrow pointing that way on the top. I had to Made the top shorter because I took six inches out of the door. Made it six inches shorter. I took three inches out of there and made that three inches shorter. And I took three inches out back here. So this back end is actually six inches shorter and the door is six inches shorter. So from here back to the end, it's a foot shorter than the original car. So I had to make the top shorter. I chopped the front three inches on the top and the back two inches. I wanted to give it that kind of look. But I left the front cap the same. I left the front cap the same length so it would give it kind of a funny car look. The front tires up way forward and stopped. I had to cut that fender out. I got my zoomies. Man, you talk about a good deal on turn around. I wanted a ton of RAM and I said, well, I'm gonna get on eBay and buy one and I priced it like 425 and up for a new one. And I said, well, I'm gonna find a used one. I ain't no hurry. So I put in a search on eBay and I put it in save search with a notification where I get an email notification when they come up. And this would come up, ton of RAM with carburetors and linkage. I got the linkage too, 400 bucks. Two 600 double pumpers. I'm about to rebuild them, but he said 600. I'm about to check, make sure. But anyway, they double pumper carburetors with the linkage for them. Tunnel ram, YN tunnel ram. I'm about to put in a bead blaster, that, and the valve covers, make them look new again. But yeah, eBay. Put in a search and save the search and do a notification on search if you're hunting for stuff and sometimes you find a good deal. But anyway, I got these other panels that goes on, the, goes down here. Of course, I'm gonna have to trim them to fit the zoomies. The reason why I done that, I don't know if you can notice the car better, that's why they open, they got to cut that right there because you don't, what happens when that hood I got a split front. When the hood come down, that bottom of that fender hit that door coming down, so you gotta cut it there. Let me open up the, the hood and we'll see how that works. Yeah, but that's homemade zoomies. That's the first headers I ever made. I just bought that flange uh, off of eBay. 30, 40, 35, 40 bucks for the flanges, and I just bought me some pipe and some nannies. And I cut them little bends out of nannies and used a straight pipe and had to bend it for my front tire. When I turned the tire, clear it, and it's nannies. 
weld just weld it together. It's a rat rod. It might they might even leak a little bit. But, and I got the stuff to coat them. I'm gonna paint them silver. Got the VH header paint, uh, silicon. But you gotta have either a oven to put them in, or you gotta have an engine, cause you gotta cure that when you put it on. You gotta cure it. So uh, I'm gonna wait till I build the engine. I'm gonna put them on, and paint them, and crank the engine up, and heat them up. You gotta heat them up so it, it gives you a description on the can what you gotta do. But anyway, that's why they're not painted yet. And the front flips, I just, maybe a couple hinges right there. And I gotta put stops on it and all that stuff. It's kind of crude right now, but, but yeah, I got these, uh, on these pieces here, got them holes in it. I got these little dial pins on this piece. Yeah, I got the holes in these, I got them pins in there and it goes in them holes. So when you close that down, them, them pins will go in them holes and keep that lined up. Hopefully, that's the plan. But I got to trim the bottom of them so they clear my zoomies and then these here be mounted permanent. They'll be mounted permanent down there. They're going to stay there. I guess put them, put them in there and brace them up and all that good stuff. But. That's the story on that. That's what that spraying looked like after I got it painted up. Took my heat gun, dried that paint. Man, I got 15 minutes it was dry hard there. It was good, that heat gun to do it. But that's what it looks like. So now when that hood comes down, I could push it down, put a hood pin in. When I pull a hood pin, it'll pop up off of that hood pin so it'll be easier to open the hood. But that was the plan with them. But it's gonna look something like that. I still gotta do some adjusting and on my Flip front, got to do a lot of adjusting, but yeah, that's what it's for. This firewall, I'm making little bitty panels. I, I'm using cardboard templates for that because it's a little bit cheaper. But uh, I'm making little panels. I've got this one, this one right here. Something like that. And another thing that I've learned is when uh, you get these panels made, you know you got to sand it if you plan on painting it. Unless you're just going to got a lust for rust and you're just going to let it rust. But I like to paint my stuff. So, uh, yeah, but sand it before you weld it in because it's a lot easier to sand it while it's out here than after you weld it up in that car. Yeah, we're getting it one piece at a time. I'm going to come in and put stitches on this just like the rest of the body. But I got half the firewall in. Now I need to get the other half. Okay. Firewall. Cut. Install. Of course, I got to finish welding it up. I'm going to wait till I get the motor out and do that. But one day, one firewall. Yeah, I just got my new cop cam kit in. Man, look at the lobes of that sucker. Looks like a looks like the Rocky Mountains to me.
L693-8. Real weight, duration, 652. Square cam, same lift and duration on exhaust and all that stuff. Got the uh, set of solid rollers, come with the kit, SK11-8, I mean SK11-693-8 is the kit I got. Got the double roller, timing chain, cop cams, cop cam lifters. <laughs> I'm a happy camper with that. Oh, man. Talk about lopity lope, Red. Yeah, I'm going to build a rat rod. Lopity lope. I got one piece of the floorboard made. I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna do little pieces, just like the rest of the, everything else, firewall and everything else. When I get back here toward the back, I might make some bigger pieces. Okay, more trials and errors of building a rat rod, but uh, I knew this was gonna happen because I, uh, I could see it coming. But anyway, I need to take these tires and wheels off so I can build them fender wells in there. But uh, they won't come off. I ain't got room. Yep, got my wheel wells cut out, smoothed up, tires off of it. I started working on this wheel well over here. I said, man, I got. I'm gonna show you how I make that. I'm gonna, while I do the next one, I'm gonna video it. But, uh, I was all up underneath this fender well, trying to work from inside there, hitting my head on the everything to be hitting your head on, trying to get up in there with the welding hood on. And I got to think, I said, man, this got to be a better way. I said, wait a minute. I got a rotisserie out there. Won't you be smart, Bob? Put the thing up on rotisserie. That way you can turn it any way you want, upside down, sideways, and uh, you can get to it better. So that's what I'm going to do. This ain't, I built this rotisserie. This ain't nothing but uh, I got some friends working oil field around where I live here, in Baxterville. They got oil field all over the place. But anyway, it's probably, this is just something I got from them out of the oil field. Two different sized pipe, smaller pipe and a bigger pipe that goes over it. Uh, well, some nuts, drill a hole, cut a hole. I just burn a hole. This thing looks rough. But see the way I do stuff? I got tools to make real perfect holes and all that. But uh, I don't need that. I just need it to work. So I get the cutting torch and blow a hole in it and make it work so I can carry on with business. So my stuff looks rough, but the reason is I don't want to take time to make it look beautiful because I ain't worried about beautiful, I'm worried about functional. But anyway, I weld these nuts on here so I can uh, adjust all this. I got fine threaded bolts so I can get a better tight. But it go this way, this can go up and down, side turn all kind of ways, this can go up and down. And uh, these go on here, and they adjust. So yeah, these, I mean, this thing is real simple. If you need a rotisserie, you can build one if you got any fabrication skill at all. And a cut and torch and weld machine and some old pipe. This is just square tubing that I picked up off a job somewhere. But yeah, it's just real simple. Real simple stuff. Oops, got another scratch in the rack. Right. I got these bolts on. on I put on the end to keep the stuff from falling all the way through. You'll see in a minute why. I 
That's why. That thing going in bowling, but I got some holes through through my two for three chassis. I'm gonna bolt that to the chassis. Hopefully it's going to balance the rear end. It's kind of heavy. I've got to see what's going to happen. Yeah, uh, these rotisseries are easy to make. I mean, you just need some pipe. You need two different sides, one side and another side to slip over. That's what I made the whole thing. Well, I used some square tubing, some heavy wall, probably a quarter or more thick wall and uh, some little casters, put some wheels on it so I can roll it anywhere I want. I rolled around and uh, I got these uh, nuts welded in, big fine thread 5-8 bolt, something like that. And uh, just you can loosen these and you go higher if you need to go higher with it to clear so you spin it all the way around, but I'm high enough where it is. And uh, once you get it turned, you lock it down with these so it won't turn. Once you get it adjusted, you, this one is where you get your balance point. I'm no good, crazy as a loon. Till I get stoned in the morning. Drunk in the afternoon. Hey, Bob! What, Red? I broke another string! What? You broke another string? Which one you got broke this time? What you mean, which one? One's hanging down off his guitar here. Oops! Dang it, Red, you broke another string! Uh, yeah! Too bad, good enough for a rat. All right, there's a wheel tub after I got it welded up, ready to go in. Okay, rotisserie, please don't break. Lord help me. Oh, uh, now I got to work on the other side. I was started, but got the side panel in. Panels on each side for a fender tub. So now I come in and build this panel. I'm gonna come up about here down. All right, got a couple more pieces in. Since uh, they they may be visible a little bit behind the seat, I put one ahead and rolled some beads in them. Uh, might not be able to see it. Might can. Who knows? But anyway, they got some beads rolled in them. 
Yep, trying to bring that box to the machine shop. Yeah, I got my rotating assembly in. I saw scat forward crank right there, four and a quarter stroke. Forged race balance to less than a gram. Got the balance upgrade on that. Skip white performance. Got the uh, forged pistons. 30 cc dome. Uh, with the aluminum heads I got coming, it's gonna make it 10 5 compression ratio. So I'll be able to run pump gas. Yeah, got the whole set of them. Uh, got the H beam rods with the ARP real real high spec bolts. I got the upgrade on the bolts, upgrade on rod sizing to make sure both ends of the holes in the rods are exact right size. I got all the bearings, rings, uh head bolts, rocker arm, ARP stuff, rocker arm stud, got the dart, adjustable valve guys, push rod guys, got the stainless intake bolts, got a upgraded high performance flex plate there, upgraded balancer, yeah, that's just that's just a tip of the iceberg of all the new parts I got, but Anyway, the block's fixing to go to the shop with the pistons so I can, uh, so he can bore it out. It's going to be 60 over. It's going to be 496 cubic inches. Looks pretty good for a rat rod, if you ask me. I'm spending too much time on this rat rod. That's one bead. Now I'll get over to the other one, get the end point lined up, get it lined up centered. Go about the same depth. If you get off, if you start a little bit off the line, is it better just to kind of let stay all the way off that same amount all the way down so you won't have no curves in that bead. But this is gonna get painted. Okay, got my engine block back from the machine shop. Okay, after I got the block thoroughly clean, put several coats of paint on it, same color as the car. Uh, got it ready to put together. First thing I'm going to do is put the camshaft in because it makes it a lot easier to put the cam in when you don't have the crankshaft sitting in there in your way. So I got the cam bearing lubed up. I uh, got the cam lubed up. Okay, I got my scat force crank out of the box, cleaned up, hosed down, washed off, blowed out. Uh, that's what one looks like when they do a highly polished on the journals. I got I got the main bearing stuck in dry. I don't put I ain't putting oil on. I'm gonna put I'm gonna set the crank out on the dry bearings. Then I'm gonna use some uh, plastic gauge and put the top bearings on and just check. I'm assuming the clearance is exactly right. Skip White should know what they're doing, but I'm going to double check to be sure. Okay, I put the main caps on with the bearings dry, torque them down to about 50 pounds with this little piece of plastic gauge on top of the journal. I set the piece of plastic gauge on top of the journal and put the cap on. 
And this, these when these whips is going to tell me the clearance when I pull this piece out. So we see what's going to happen. I'm going to take them off. We're going to see what it looks like. Okay, there's a piece of plastic gauge. And if we look at the gate at, at this, then we line it up. I don't know if you can see that or not, but to me it looks like three thousandths. I mean point zero zero three. Perfect. Exactly what we want. That's perfect right there. ARP main studs. Yep. Look at them big old holes. <laughs> That's 335 cc runners. They got all, all the comp, comp valve springs for the cam. I got the little retainers, locks, everything is comp. All good stuff. I really like the way this head looked. That's all. I mean, it's the combustion chambers. Look good, good valves, got the dimple, it's not the flat top valve, dimple valve means it's a good valve. It's got uh, big old intake ports. <laughs> Ooh, the big old cam, this thing is gonna scream. Now, if you look at my heads <clears throat> and with the intake gasket on it, you can see the head pretty much takes up the whole gasket. It's got a little bit, it's a little bit smaller than the gasket, but not a lot. Now, if we take that gasket and bring it over here to the intake manifold, You can see as the intake manifold is a pretty good bit smaller, so what we're going to do is what they call port matching. I'm going to have to open up these ports. All right, that's what we got after that process. Okay, got all the lifters in and push rods, the new trick flow push rods. Got all the uh, rocker arms on. That was perfect right there. Okay, the old raggedy motor's done. shop destroyed building transmission but it's, it's almost done waiting on a pan and a couple parts and uh it'll be done but i did get my fender fender wells pieces bolted in i got you know six bolts 
and I got some little tabs welded to this piece and I got the nuts on the back side I got the nuts welded to them tabs so it, all you got to do is stick it up in place and screw the bolt in you ain't got to worry about finagling with no nuts and, and I went ahead and bought this Moser 1350 yoke chrome molly from uh, Summit Racing Yep, got the tires, rear tires on, fender, fender pieces back in. Uh, I, the more Chevrolets that had them, that, uh, they they was easier to put on and off than mine, no doubt. But uh, I got them on, no problem. Uh, started mounting my seats. Okay, I'm making the front roll pan take the place of the front bumper. So. I cut me out a piece, got the measurements and all that, and I started bending it. Uh, made two bends in the brake. That little lip there, and then I made this other bend in the brake. Then I got a piece I cut off my dry shaft tube, which is a three inch, and laid that over. And, Started shaping that. Yeah, I'll show you what it's gonna look like. Anyway, this is just a small piece of it. It's gonna go right there. Got to make another one for the other part. And then I got to make the end pieces, which is gonna have to come down under the headlight. These end pieces are going to be a totally separate piece. Like I always do, I make small pieces. I don't want to make the whole thing in one shot. So, Oh yeah, I made this uh, edge around the hole for my engine compartment. One inch. And around the fender wells. Yeah, that made it look a lot better. I was worried about that. So that solved that problem. Don't need no big old heavy bumper. That's all we need right there. Didn't think it'd take long to do all that. Yeah, I got her done. I put me some, welded me some flames up in the hood there. I guess, or we could call it demon horns. I don't know, but anyway. I've done that. Uh, motors together. Transmissions together. The car is sitting there begging for a motor and transmission. It's way ready for a motor and transmission. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to put the, marry up this motor and transmission. And we're going in that car right there with it. Motor transmission, time to go in. Yeah, them ports match up. I'm talking about us, uh, man, uh, you, huh. Good matching up right there. Yeah, the ports match up perfect. Uh, about 90% done with the wiring. Uh, still got to wire some of the engine up. But man, all that, and I didn't, I only had the headlights wired up. I, all I got is wires for the brake lights back there and I'm gonna have the brake lights for now. I got the fuel pump back there wired up and the fuel sending unit wired up. I got all these gauges. Got all my gauges wired up. It's 
switches star button all nine y'all got a key switch but I'm not using that for the start I'm gonna use that start button so I can spin it over without turning the key on if I need to plus I got a one of red safety switches for ignition I can shut it off uh, tachometer cooler there for my transmission I got a mount in front of the radiator here and I still got to mount the electric fan on the other side Got a little miniature alternator, a little 30 amp. It's gonna go right there, somewhere right in there, and uh, gotta get that belt to clear that bottom hose. So we gotta work on that. And we're gonna attempt to start it. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, first start. Wish me luck. Everything checks out. Let's we'll see what's gonna happen. Okay, well, I done went done. Uh, Lexon windshield. It's in there. Uh, little rivets with stainless steel washers is what that is. That silver makes it like it's got worn down, the paint worn down to the metal. what I was looking for it's what we're gonna have uh, the exhaust is right there <laughs> and it's real 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 loud so it's just gonna be the sound is gonna be it's probably all you're gonna hear in this camera but uh yeah so there's that <laughs>
challenge. Really? Yeah.